What's up gamers and collectors, DGC back with another video and today I pose the question, is it even fun to collect games anymore? Let's discuss that. <laughs> Alright guys, so the other day I was watching a fellow YouTuber's channel, his name's Asian Sleepy, I'll leave a link down below for his channel. He uh, had a video um, about what is your favorite system to collect for. And it really took me by surprise in the sense that I couldn't immediately answer the question. I was like, I'm literally that game collector. Like, I collect games. I've always collected games since I was... I would say I, I hardcore got into it when I was about 12. It was either 11 or 12 when I started going to the flea market with my childhood best friend. His grandparents used to go every weekend. That's how they would make extra money for like vacations and birthdays and all that crap for the grandkids and you know, that kind of thing. So I would start going with them. They, <clears throat> they would set up their little table and sell their wares, so to speak, kind of like the Resident Evil guy. What are you buying? Um, but yeah, so you know, they would sell crap and um, you know, as I would go, there, the first time I went, I like sort of kind of got forced to go because I like stayed the night at his parents' house and they were like, all right, you guys can go with the grandparents and go to the little flea market thing. And then lo and behold, I started walking around and then like I saw a Sega Genesis and I was like, man, I wanted that bad when I was a kid, uh, like in the early 90s, the mid 90s. I was born in 89, so the, the 90s. I grew up with the SNES. So from 94 is when I got the SNES and Christmas of 94, I would have been four years old. Yeah, I would have been four and my sister would have been seven. So it was technically ours, but it's mine now because typically women don't play games. It just is what it is. Now, yes, but back then, not really. So it just became my SNES regardless. So I always wanted the Genesis because my child, uh, like super early on childhood friend, uh, his name was Eric, he had the Genesis. I had the SNES. So it was like that little console war thing and like he'd be playing Aladdin. I'd be like, oh, our Aladdin is not... You know, but whatever. Um, it's personal preference on Aladdin anyway, but regardless. So he had that and then like I found it for 15 bucks and it came with like 20 games, two controllers, all the cables. And it was $15 back in, that would have been 2002. So like it was a steal. And then like a couple months later, it was, um, it might've been either a couple months or a year later. It might've been 2003, I think. Yeah, so then it, I wanna say it was 2002, Christmas of 2002, I think I got my PlayStation 2. Then at some point, in that next year, so it probably would have been 2003, so I would have been 13 at that point. I'm going back to the same flea market. I found a Dreamcast for 20 bucks, and I still have it to this day, still kicking. Um, and you know, it came with, uh, oddly enough, three controllers. Who has three? It's either two or four, like why would you have three? Whatever. Um, and it had, you know, three memory cards, one official, two uh, aftermarket, what was it called, Performance? I think that was their uh, little ghetto brand that they had, uh, the cheap brand. Uh, it had, you know, it had um, Hydro Thunder, Dead or Alive, um, Who Wants to Beat Up a Millionaire, um, I think Soul Calibur, GTA 2, no, 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 I bought GTA 2 from GameStop online back in like 2003, it was like one of my first online purchases way back in the day for like anything really. Um, I didn't get a computer, a family computer till the year of 2000 or 2001, so it, I would have been 10 or 11 when we got that. Um, but yeah, so I remember buying GTA, and then I got like, it wasn't a ton of games. I want to say it was eight or nine games. There was there was uh, 2K1. Uh, no, actually, it might have even been just 2K. It might, I think it might have been the year 2000 of the football, the baseball. No, it wasn't baseball. Was it? It was. I don't know. Whatever. It was like two or three sports games and Hydro Thunder, DOA, and a couple like the good games, Soul Calibur and Sonic Adventure One. I think it was, and then maybe even Fantasy Star. I can't. I honestly can't remember. But regardless, it was like ten games, three controllers, three memory cards, the cords, and all that shit. And it was twenty dollars in two thousand and three. Like that was still while it like just became unirrelevant or it became irrelevant a year prior in two thousand two. And I mean, even still to a large extent. It was only a year after it died, so to speak, and like they were still releasing games or whatever. The dude sold it to me. I was 13, and it was funny too because I remember he had this big box of porn DVDs next to it. And like obviously being a 13 year old, like getting into liking women and stuff, I'm just like, who? And he's like, hey, I'll let you look at the Dreamcast, but you can't look at that button. And I was like, all right. But yeah, so like I picked up the Dreamcast. And then, like, ever since then, it, it, it was a place, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but regardless, it was a flea market that existed for, it, it, it just got, the property that it was on just got sold, uh, like, six months to a year ago. So it, I had been going there for the better part of 20 years, and there was two or three guys that, like, one guy drove out from Delaware all the way into, 
uh, Pasadena, Maryland is where it was, um, and he would set up his wares there. And, you know, it used to be fun. Like, I used to go there, and you would get deals, but then eventually, like, eBay happened, or happened in the sense that people were like, oh, this is worth this much on eBay, so now I can, I could, I could sell my Super Mario World for fucking $40. And it's just like, dude, all the Super Mario games are the most printed games on any Nintendo console, but they're also the most sought after. So, like, from that aspect, I kind of understand the pricing on that, because, like, those are the games you want. If you're freshly getting into a console, you're going to go for the main, like, if it's a Nintendo, you're going for the Mario games. If it's a Sega system, you're going for your RPGs and your Sonics and your miscellaneous platformers and that kind of thing. And then it's Xbox. If you're getting into that, you're getting your Halos, your Gears, your Forzas, your other random crap. And if it's a PlayStation, you're definitely getting your JRPGs, you're getting your Slys, your Ratchets, your Crash Bandicoots, your um, Spyros, all that crap. Resistance if you're into the PS3, and so many different things from different console generations and categories and stuff. But he posed the question, Sleepy Asian, posed the question, like, what was your favorite console to collect for? And, like, I really couldn't answer that question because... You know, for a long time it was the OG Xbox, and then now I've gotten to the point where the OG Xbox, I basically, there's only two games that I still want to buy for the Xbox. One being Futurama, and I'm just frankly not going to pay $150 for that game. One, Futurama is probably one of my favorite shows of, cartoon or not, of all time, because I just love Futurama. Everything about it just cracks me the fuck up. I could watch that show forever. But that, and then the other game is um, Capcom... Classics Collection Volume 2, I think is how that's worded. I don't know. It's the little arcade collection. And that's now going for about 100 150 bucks. And I'm just, I'm not going to pay that much for that game, either of those games. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, eventually, I might find it or might be able to find someone that has it. If you have it, be sure to comment down below. And then we can maybe work out some kind of trade for something. Um, but I'm just not going to pay that kind of money for those for those games. And then I got to thinking about it, like collecting for the Wii U. I have the full set. There's... A few things I could still collect for it, right? Um, now, like, if I'm sure anybody that's subscribed to me is more than likely subscribed to Adam Corley. The dude has an amazing collection, more specifically, an amazing Dreamcast collection. He's got, I'm pretty sure, he definitely has all the American stuff. Pretty sure he has all, like, the European exclusives, and then he has a good bit of the Japanese stuff. Obviously, he can't read Japanese, or maybe he can't, I don't know. But, you know, with European games, they're generally in English, just at 50 frames instead of 60. But regardless... So, like, I always think about that. I'm like, well, do I want to go down the Adam Corlick route of, like, getting the Nintendo Selects for the Wii U? Do I want to get the European exclusives? Do I want to get the exclusive limited editions that came out for that console? Where do you draw the line? Is it still fun to even collect for? Like, like with the Wii U, like, I haven't... Uh, the last thing I bought for the Wii U was, um, right here. And is it still sealed? It is not sealed. Fast Racing Neo, this is the European version. Now, this never got an American release, which really sucks, because this is truly one of the greatest games on the Wii U, and it is on the Switch, except for they renamed it Fast RMX. I, and you can, I can verify this, you can check my Twitter account, I constantly bug limited run games to make a physical of this for the Switch, which is Fast RMX. It's the exact same game, nothing really changed in it, but it's the they changed the name for whatever reason. But... I bought this just because I love it and it's just kind of cool and I like to look at it. Now, if I were to region-free mod my Wii U, then I could play it. And I do have a spare Wii U, so maybe I will. But I already have the download anyway, but kind of just bought it just because it was like $8, so fuck it. But other than that, like, prior to that would have been um, Axiom Verge, which was Limited Run. Um, and, you know, that was cool and that's a whole other topic on Limited Run. Like, I like them, but I kind of don't like the way that they've uh, guided collecting into this weird little thing that they've kind of done and in inflated prices of things and not printing enough copies and then people want to buy these games and then you're just gonna oh we're only gonna make 1500 copies even though we have millions of fans now like i get it from a business standpoint like that's your thing you do limited print runs like that's cool but then like and yeah they kind of do the open pre-order thing now but this is going to be a totally different video i'm getting sidetracked here and then i got home today and i had two packages so this was from, do I, did I grab the little card? I didn't grab the little card. This is from Laser Bear. That's the website. I'll link it in the description in case you want to look at it. Totally not, I, I paid for these. Um, but, so this is for the GameCube. This is for my uh, GC Loader. 
And then this is for the Dreamcast, which is for the, uh, what do they call that? The GDEMU, right? So this is really nice. I, I was kind of hesitant on the purple. My GameCube is purple. He ran out of black with, um, you can get it with the slits here for extra uh, SD cards, or you can get it without, but he had no black for either one. The black just would have looked cleaner in the inside of it because some of it's black anyway, but whatever. I went with the purple. It's actually a pretty close color of purple, and regardless, once the disc is shut, and I have, I bought a t uh, 128 gigabyte SD card, so like you're never gonna see this anyway, and I already download, made copies of all the games that I absolutely have real copies of. Um, but yeah, so I got that, and then I've, I've had the GC, GDEMU, it's such a weird name, so can't you, whatever, it's another side tangent, but then I got this one, this has the one slit for extra SD cards in it, and then it has the button here too, which is, hopefully you guys can see that, it's got the little uh, Dreamcast logo on there. So I opted for black on this one, and then uh, he did get, he does mail out gummy bears, so like, I'm gonna snack on these during, oh, these are like the little, the little joints, look how little that is, <laughs> um, oh, gluten free. Yep. Yeah. Low sodium, sugar free. Okay. Those are pretty good. These are, uh, oh man, there's a lot of them in here. Hell yeah. All right. So don't mind me while I'm mac on these gummy bears. Ooh, they are, oh. I always get pissed off. The blue ones are always the best. Hopefully you can see that without me dropping them. There's only one blue one. They never put enough blue ones in there. But, um, sorry. These are really good. So, with that being said, I've been kind of getting into modding my consoles more so and getting rid of games and stuff and um like is collecting even fun anymore though like i genuinely am asking because i've been at this so long that like i've literally been collecting hardcore since like 2001 2002 so like 20 years like i've i've watched the rise of collecting being cool and then like now it's at its all-time high of where like I don't know, let me just pull something random out of here, like, this game right here, Jurassic Park for the Xbox, this is, uh, CIB, it's a really good copy, I spent, I think, 80 bucks on it a, a year or two ago, maybe three years ago, something like that, and I've honestly only played it a few times, um, that disc is immaculate, but, so I've only honestly played it a few, ooh, that manual's good too, that antique store smell, uh, but yeah, so I've only played that a few times, but, I spent 80, that's, 80 is usually my cutoff for a retro priced game, like, that's just like, it's, after it's gotten to 80, that's a little much, now that's got the, the case, and the manual, and the disc is really mint, so it's kinda, kinda justifiable, but like, a cart only game for 80 bucks, I don't know, and then like, so I've been selling off my NES collection, I have still roughly about 60 to 80 games up there, um, and I just, I think I'm going to get an EverDrive for that too. Because like, I love my NES, but that was, I got, oh, I got that at the flea market as well. And I got most of those games at the flea market as well. I think I paid $12 for the NES. And it was like two or three controllers again. It was the dog bone with the little weird circle thing and then two normal controllers. The light gun, duck hunt, Mario. And now mind you, this was all when I was like 12 and I had this sweet basement set up. My parents got me a TV. So I had a TV they got me a nice little carpet with some pad. Then they gave me their old couches downstairs. Then I had I had my Super. I had the GameCube. Then I had the Genesis. Then I had the NES. Then I had the PS2. Then I bought the Xbox. After the PS2, my parents were like, nah, we ain't buying you no more consoles. So then I had to buy the Xbox. And then that kind of turned into all of this. Um, and then I remember camping out with, the same, with that same best friend to get the Wii. And then I actually owned and bought five brand new Wiis because I kept buying them and selling them. Buying them and selling them. The first one I bought it, then I sold it, and then just kept buying and selling. I still have the fifth one now, and I'm not going to get rid of it now, obviously. But And then, like, collecting for the Wii is still fun for me, but, like, the prices are just getting fucking ridiculous. It's just not fun anymore because there aren't enough copies of these games printed way back in the day to meet the demand of people that are getting into the hobby now. And I run a YouTube channel dedicated to game collecting, so clearly I want to interact with people. I want people to be in the hobby. But now it's just like there's just so many people into the hobby and then the pandemic sure as shit didn't help with that because everybody and their mom just started buying games. Like the price of Wii Sports and you can ask Captain Retro, I remember he kept finding them and selling them for like ridiculous prices. You know, that shit shot up to like 30 or 40 bucks mid-pandemic and then it's just like they printed the fuck out of Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Like those were probably 20, 30, 40 million copies of that made. 
or uh, Wii Sports itself, I mean, fuck, dude, they probably printed 80 million copies, that, because that came with the Wii for, like, half of its lifetime, um, but, you know, and then with the 360, I still really do love collecting for that, but that's also getting to that point where it's, you know, they're getting to around the 20-ish to, like, 45-ish for, like, the good games, which still isn't terribly priced for a CIB game, but it's just, like, there's still probably about 30 games for the 360 that I'd really like to own. Uh, literally just exclusives is what I want to own for the 360, but there's about 220 of them, give or take. But I mean, you know, let's just call it 20 times 20. So, you know, you, you're looking at a lot of money to being a game collector is just not cheap at all anymore. Like even, and this is documented on the channel, um, with all of my game hunting, uh, Adventure Times with Nico, my cousin, I miss doing that shit. That's also, we'll talk about that in a sec. Like most of these games, like I remember picking up Volvo Drive for Life. This was like three to five dollars. Kung Fu Chaos, again, three to five bucks. Uh, Gun Valkyrie, pretty cool game, I'm not gonna lie, the controls are fucking terrible though. But again, five to 10, maybe 15 bucks, but still like worth it because it's a very unique experience. If you don't own this, you should. Uh, like Crazy Taxi 3 awesome game like five bucks but now like let me just i don't know i'm just looking at games down here just random ass games but like now it's getting to the point where like all these games are just like creeping up in value and i mean i get it and like i'm partially to blame because like i'm pretty much one of at least that i'm aware of one of the only few people who even makes og xbox content on the regular basis um and like you know it's just they you know what would be cool, and I don't know how, legally how they could do it, but if Limited Run could somehow get into reprinting these old games in the same fashion, but like putting like a reprint, like a repro thing on there, but like remaking these, I mean, they're already doing it with some cartridge games on like I am 8 bit, they're doing it. Um, uh, a few other, you know, limited sites are kind of doing these reprints of Mega Man's, and you know, obviously uh, Capcom, or is that, yeah, it's Capcom. Wow, that was a brain fart. Capcom's obviously giving them to go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and, you know, make that chip and make some carts for it and that kind of thing. But, like, I don't know. Like, could EA be like, all right, guys, go ahead and make a new copy of Burnout 3? Because, like, this isn't rare at all. And it was made for PS2 and Xbox. But it's gotten to the point where, like, this is truly one of the greatest games of that generation, at least driving-wise. And, like, this now goes for, I believe, 30 to 40 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And it's totally worth every penny of it. But, like, I don't know, something... Okay, again, I bought this game brand new. This is Conquer Live and Reloaded. I actually, I even have the strategy guide for this. <laughs> um, I bought this brand new, and, like, I had to drag my sister there because it had, like, the warning label. No, I think I was with my mom. I made my mom... I had to get my mom to come into the GameStop. When did the, This was 06? Was this 06? No, it was 05. So it was October-ish of 05, so I would have been 16. Um... And I like I had to still had to get my mom to come inside to 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 you know let me purchase that, and then like I guess she looked at it and scroll. It's actually a pretty vulgar game even on the Xbox, but I don't know. Is collecting still fun? Like I still enjoy it. Like I'm posing this question to you guys because I want to interact with the audience more, but I don't know. It's just it's gotten to this weird point where like I got super hardcore into the PS4. Like here's all my VR shit. This is. Uh, I don't know, 20 times 4, and then I got way more up there. Um, there's limited editions all spread up top of, you know, PSVR games. And then I got really big into the exclusives. I have basically all the exclusives of the PS4. I have every shmup that has ever come out on the PS4. To my knowledge, I do have at least one copy of it um, in some shape or form. And, like, that's super fun to collect for. Uh, Nintendo stuff is not fucking fun to collect anymore. Like, I mean, current, like, for the last... Uh, let's call it, basically since the Switch Lords got into liking Nintendo, it has not been fun because scalpers have, like, invaded the hobby. And it's just not fun anymore. Like, the Zelda Joy-Cons. I'm recording this after Nintendo showed off that Direct. The Zelda Joy-Cons. I think Target had them up real quick, like, fucking gone. Just gone, in a matter of seconds. Um, and you know, they're 80 bucks, but like... Frankly, I kind of don't really like the Switch all that much, but I really like Zelda, and I'm a hardcore Nintendo fan. Even though it seems like I'm an Xbox dude, Nintendo is where my heart is. Like, I day one buy almost every Nintendo first-party title, and I just love the Nintendo brand. It's just, it is who I am as a gamer. Platformers are my favorite. I love the, 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 the 
just everything about Nintendo. I, I am a hardcore Nintendo fan, and I'm not even afraid to admit it. I used to be when I was younger. Because, like, back in the day when I was growing up, you were fucking lame if you liked Nintendo. Like, during the N64 and the GameCube era, when they were, like, at their worst, you were the lame kid if you were into Nintendo and you didn't have the PS2 or the Xbox. Like, and <laughs> probably why I ended up getting the PS2 and the Xbox after having the GameCube first. And then got the Dreamcast in between there, too. But, like... So for me, the sixth generation is definitely my favorite generation of consoles just because, like, that was my childhood. Like, from 10 to, I don't know, 17 was when I was, like, hardcore playing those consoles in that generational era. And um, and then 360 came out, and then the Wii came out, and then I got the PS3, I don't know, like, 08 or 09. I think it was 09, maybe. I, I got that one pretty late in life. But then it's what's funny is PS3 was... Not really anymore, but it was for the last five years. It was so cheap. It was stupid cheap. I've got two or three hundred PS3 games down here. I got almost all of them at GameStop CIB for like five bucks or less. I used to go, and I mean, I, again, I have videos of it. Just walk out with like a fat stack of 20 PS3 games for like 60 bucks. And it was awesome. But like, I, I think with collecting now, like, GameStop sucks now. They suck ass. I hope GameStop fails. Like, I hate to say it that way, because that's people, that's Americans losing their jobs, and I don't like that aspect of it, but GameStop as a corporation, you suck ass. You got rid of the Gamer Pro card, you know, you, which you, you finally did good, and you gave us 20% off instead of the shitty 10%, right? You finally gave us 20%, and that lasted for two or three years, and then they just all of a sudden canceled that shit, and you had to rush out to the store and go get it today, and it was unlimited. You could have actually bought as many years as you wanted and stacked them. Eventually, they stopped that, but they did... They did have that for a couple years. And then Best Buy, they had the gamer, ga it was Gamers Club Unlocked. That shit was awesome. It was 20% off new games. Like, how cool was that? You could walk in and go get a brand new PS4 game for $48, and Maryland has 6% sale tax. So you're talking like $53 to go get a brand new game. That was fucking cool, man. And it was 20 bucks a year. Um, that lasted for three or four years, and it just... Things like that that made collecting fun. And then the GameStop power power up card, they're, they're garbage now. It's 10%. And the stores are all, they're all bubkiss now. You walk in, they got emo shit and, and cups and t shirt And, you know, okay, again, to some extent, like, is it cool? Do I want a cool Zelda shirt? Okay, maybe. But, like, I don't care about, like, the random other shit that isn't gaming. Like, if it's gaming related, okay, cool. It can stay at GameStop. But, like, as far as I'm concerned, the Funko Pops... They had, there was a point in time where there was this one that way up where I used to live two houses ago, the, the GameStop that was like five, ten minutes from me, they had like this massive fucking wall of Funko Pops. And again, I'm not hating on that. Like, I, dude, I fucking collect Amiibos. Like, I'm not hating on your hobby if you're into collecting Funko Pops. But like, it's called GameStop, dude. Like, you go in there, I want to look at gaming stuff. I don't want to look at all the Funko Pops. And like, okay, if you want to have like, a Pikachu Funko Pop and like a, a Master Chief Funko Pop. That's cool. That's gaming related. But then you got all the Spider-Mans and the Batmans and the Walking Dead shit. And again, all that stuff's cool. Like, I'm not trying to hate on it. Like, I, I, I like all those things as a nerdy person. But like, I want to get that from Walmart or Amazon. Like, when I walk into the game store, I want to get games, man. I just, I want to be... Like, some of my fondest memories are hunting with my cousin... Um, I love watching those old videos. I really do. Like, I hate to keep plugging that. But there was four of them. He doesn't, he's not into game hunting anymore. He's just, he's married. He's an old fart. He still games, but only on the Switch. He's a Switch Lord. Um, and you know, it just, it, I still watch those videos because it still brings me some satisfaction and some joy of the good old days when I went out game hunting with him. But, you know, so GameStop sucks now. Best Buy got rid of their card. And then like, have you been into a Best Buy lately? Their gaming section sucks now. It's fucking terrible. Like, I have I have three or four Best Buys that are within, like, a 30, 40-minute range of me. I occasionally go to the different ones just to look at their supply of, of Switch shit to see if they have different rare games that I kind of want to get. Or sometimes if they have some PS4 JRPGs on sale, then I usually buy those up. Um, and then with GameStops, they're all garbage now. They, 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 they have no 360 games. All the Wii games have, have gotten down, dwindled down to the shitty sports games at this point. And yeah, I guess that's largely to blame on the fact that, you know, it's just, it, it just, it, it is what it is. And I guess the good shit's been plucked through by people like me. And I mean, it has been by every GameStop in the state of Maryland. I've been to them all. Um, but 
I don't know. And then like with PS3 stuff, they still have PS3 and 360, but I guarantee you by the end of this year, they're they're done with it, right? And then like the one game store in Maryland that does actually sell retro games in the store, which is cool, they have cardboard cutouts of like saying, you know, they, they'll they'll print out the the you know the the picture then they'll put a piece like glue it to a piece of cardboard and then put it in their little glass case the fuck do you think i'm gonna do bust open the glass case and steal your n64 game like you can't keep like why is the game in the back of the store like what the fuck you know there'll be like multiple employees in there it's like what do you think i'm gonna do break the glass and rob n64 games like it's just it's i don't know gamestop just irritates the shit out of me like some of my fondest memories are like going in there with like my mom and bugging her to let oh mom i gotta get that conquer let me get that and it was my money but like you know i had to bug my mom to get it and then like getting my xbox uh i would have been that was oh three or oh four when i got the xbox again i had my mom drive me up to the gamestop that literally just closed and it, that was my childhood gamestop that i used to go to it was in the uh, the harbor center where i live and it's closed now and they had a blowout sale and i missed all the uh, maybe potentially good shit because they were they were clearancing out everything the shelves the the poster everything they were just clearing it all out right and um because no joke where i live in annapolis there was um there was at least three or four game stops in the city of annapolis like it was fucking crazy <laughs> uh, eb games funko uh, funko land all that shit there was like three or four of them here in my entire life just always somewhere now there's one in the mall and i think that's it which to be fair is frankly all you need in one city but regardless it's kind of annoying it's in the mall because then you got to go and deal with all and i just liked going into the outdoor mall and then like could park and go you know nerd out and walk out with a rack of games but um but yeah so you know getting the xbox and again i went there with my mom and i 13 or 14 and it's the halo xbox so it came with halo and then they made me go back out and get my mom how embarrassing is that and then i walked back in with my mom and i'm just sitting there like oh come in man let me get that halo xbox and you know sure as shit she did and like i still I, I saved up my paper route money for that thing and like you know it's it's just a fond memory that i have with gamestop and then like i really a long long time ago like when i was I don't know, five to maybe eight years old. So we're talking 1995 to 1998. I remember right before we moved here from where we used to live, um, coming here uh, during the holiday season. It was either pre-Christmas or after Christmas, and we had a little bit of Christmas money. And I remember going into Funko Land. It was one of my few memories with Funko Land before you know GameStop bought them all out. And um, I remember going in there, and I bought... Um, is it still here? It's definitely still here. I just don't know where it is. Oh, yep, here it is. It's on top. And I remember <laughs> my sister picked out um, uh, Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. Obviously, she got a really good game. I picked out, and you know what? To some large extent, I still really love this game. This is uh, Tasmania from Sunsoft. So this is still, it was used, but this is still my copy from 1990-whatever it was. And, like, I just the, the music to this game, and it just really... That's what's fun about retro collecting for me, at, at least when I pick up old games and put them in, like, when I hear the music to this, when I hear the music with, for, um, let me grab this one out of here, too. Actually, all three of these are just really, um, very, uh, memorable things for me, too. Like, this is probably one of my favorite, uh, Super Nintendo, it is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games, aside the Donkey Kong trilogy. Uh, this is separate, Spider-Man Separation Anxiety. Still, this is my, I had this new, this is still my original copy from way back in 1990, whatever. Um, just the music to this, it's just, it gets me in that childhood vibe of sitting on the floor, just button mashing with my sister, and like, I would always be Venom, she'd always be Spider-Man, and just, and then like, uh, Pac-Man 2, the, is it, the new adventures. I've never even beaten the first level of this, but I've played the first level probably a hundred times in my life. I just remember riding around on the skateboard and hearing all the funny little noises and then the wife and the baby and the and the apples and the bees and the milk that you had to go get and just the memories of like going to the store and getting this and thumbing through all the, the cartridge games and there's other nerds in there being loud and looking at all the games and shit and other kids just being mesmerized by all the things on the wall and just it's those memories that I really Oh man, I'm talking so long. I haven't made one of these long videos in a long time. But you know what? It's my channel. I don't care that this video is going to do bad. Fuck it. I really don't care. This is kind of a long rant tangent video that I've been wanting to make for a long time anyway. But so, just like the memories of, of, of 
getting the game and, 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 you know, fiddling through the games and just looking at them all. And as a kid, I didn't give a shit about the stickers or the price or any of that. Like, I saw Tasmania, and, like, I loved that show when I was a kid. So I was like, oh, man, Tasmanian Devil. Like, I want that game, Dad. And, you know, then my sister, obviously, Super Mario All-Star is, like, literally one of the best games on the SNES. She got that one, and I still have it, actually. Um, but, you know, it's just it, it's just those memories that I have. And then, like, when the Wii U came out, it kind of... I think the reason that I liked the Wii U so much and really got so hardcore into it was, one, it hit at a really rough spot in my life. Uh, I was really going through a lot of crap in my life um, when the Wii U came out. It Just a really interesting predicament that I would never wish upon anybody. But, um, so, you know, when that came out 2012, that was uh, December, November 19th of 2012, uh, I remember camp... Well, camping out i had it pre-ordered uh but we went super early so the east coast of the usa was some of the first like literally the first people aside from press people and nintendo people employees that had the wii u because we got it at uh gamestop here and, and my boy pat he worked there my manager from when i worked there he was still working there after long after i had left uh he, you know, he opened up the store one hour early because, you know, he just said, fuck it, and he did it. I mean, all the people that were waiting there pre-ordered the console anyway, and everybody, it was a Sunday, I remember. And um, I remember getting it. I got uh, Ninja Gaiden, I got uh, New Super Mario Bros., and I got um, uh, Nintendo Land and Assassin's Creed and then Call of Duty. Uh, Nintendo Land came with it. But so, like, the Wii U was the last console that really just had me hype. I was hyped for the Wii U because it was such a fresh, cool concept when that came out. And the, 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 the limitless potential of that console never got utilized. The only game, to, to my knowledge, that really truly utilized the Wii U for what it was, was Pikmin 3. Now, if you've played it on the Switch, you've played the fucking rubbish version. I'm sorry. You've played the rubbish version. You, you just... It's just the garbage version. With the Wii U... You plop the control, you plop the gamepad in front of you on the little stand that it comes with, and you got your map. Then you're playing with the Wii Mote and Motion Plus, and then the uh, Nunchuck, right? And then you got the game on the screen. It's just, it's bliss. It's just, it was such a cool experience. And then Nintendo Land with all the little mini games that it had. I actually just played Nintendo Land again last night and played through each mini game for like five, ten minutes just to really kind of reminisce on that. So like. The day the Wii U came out, I would have been 23, I think. Yeah, 22 or 23. I don't know. A long time ago. I mean, shit, that was almost 10 years ago when the Wii U came out. Like, that's hard to think about. Um, but so that was Nintendo's last home console. Like, most people don't really think about that when they think about the Switch. Like, yeah, it's kind of a home console, but really it's more of a portable that you can hook up to the TV. It's not really a home console. Now, I personally believe the Switch Pro is going to be an actual dedicated home console, which I'll be happy with because that's what I've always wanted as a Nintendo fan. I've always been more so the console Nintendo fan than the handheld. I always get the handhelds day one, and I always get most of the first party games day one, but I was always more of a console guy. Except for the GBA, that was an outlier. I was super into the GBA. Um... But, you know, with the Wii U, though, like, it was just, it was cool, man, because it was so different. Nintendo finally jumped into the HD era, um, and at the time, shitty Xbox One was getting them 792p games, and Wii U was getting 1080p, baby! And, yeah, they still looked worse, but they were in 1080p! And, I don't know, man, like, it's just, collecting has, I don't know It's if it's because I'm older now and it's just less fun, or if, like, I have more responsibilities and bills to pay, or if just truly these games are just not grabbing me like they used to with these older consoles. Or are they just so long now that they're just not fun to get and like I'm just like ah, I don't I don't have time to play that. And like I find myself looking at a game and I'm just like this is going to take way too long to beat. And I just put it back on the shelf. And has the pandemic affected me collecting? In Maryland at least. Um, it's really weird because you got to wear masks everywhere and... Everybody, like, it's weird. It's really split 50-50, and I feel like the country is fully 50-50 on this. I wear the mask, I do my thing, whatever. You know, some stores you walk into, and, and then the owner will tell you, yeah, it doesn't matter. But then a lot, I mean, it's technically mandated in Maryland. You have to do it. Uh, but some stores don't care. But regardless, I wear it. keeps everyone happy. I don't want to hear it from anybody about wearing it or not wearing it. But 
has that affected you guys? Because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Like for me, it kind of does because like I don't feel like masking up and I don't feel like, you know, having people like they look at you like you're the devil when you get like real close to them. And it's just like, bro, I got my mask on. You got yours on. Like chill. Um, but then, you know, not going to go down that whole rabbit hole with you on YouTube because that's not the kind of channel I am. I'm not a conspiracy channel. But, you know, it's just with, I don't know. And, like, I have the full set of the Wii U, so, like, I remember going out and actively collecting for that for, I would say I started hardcore collecting for it in about late 2014, early 2015. So, like, that was at the point where, like, I knew it was dead. As a Nintendo fan, you just know because you just know when Nintendo has given up on that console. They always say that they haven't, but there's usually a year where they're going to give you Animal Crossing, uh, Amiibo Festival and Mario Tennis and uh, a bunch of shitty indie games that they're going to print out physically just to keep shit for you to buy. Um, and, you know, I knew. And then, like, with the when the uh, GBA ended and the DS came out, they were like, no, 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 no. It's not going to replace the GBA. It's not. It's not. We promise. And that's why they had the GBA. It replaced the GBA. And, you know, the DS was great. It was a cool console. Again, I bought it day one. Uh, I was second in line at the GameStop that still exists, and um, on pre-orders, I was the second one there. Super proud of that. Um, and I remember, like, I my childhood best friend, like, his mom drove me and him to get the DS, and, like, he didn't get a pre-order, and I did, and, like, it was, I still remember that, too. He refused to play the DS. Like, I, I handed it to him with Mario 64 DS and then uh, Metroid Prime Hunters. That's all I could afford it was the game, and then it came with the demo. Uh, Mario and the system. That's all I could afford. And I was like, dude, just play it. Just play it. Just play it. And he like, he would not play it until he could get his own, which to some large extent as a collector now, like I can understand like wanting to open the box up yourself and sniff it. Cause that's something weird I like to do. And then, um, you know, turn it on, make your little profile and your me and, and this and that, and like play the game on your own system. Like I can, I can respect that now as an, as an adult of why he probably did that. But like, again, it's just a fun memory that I have going from GameStop and like, just, I miss, I miss the, the, I miss collecting the way it used to be. And it's just, I've never, I'm not a rich man and I'm not a poor man, but I've never had more disposable income. Like, I, again, I'm not, I believe me, I'm not that rich. I really don't buy that many games anymore. Next video will be a pickups video, but, and there's literally like three or four games in there, but like, I don't buy that many games anymore, but like, I want to, but then when I go out and I look at the price, I'm just like, bro, what happened to these prices? This is just ludicrous. Like, I'm not paying $60 for Mario on the Wii. Like, I'm just not. They made 30 to 40 million copies of New Super Mario Bros. Like, it's not a rare game. It's just not. Like, there's this one store, and I almost hate to call them out, but I'm going to anyway. Pandora's Cube up there in uh, Towson, Maryland. Uh, it's a good store. They're very friendly. You know, the, you walk in the door. They always say hi. It's a very. They're very nice people. It's too two or three young guys, they've worked there as long as I've been going there. It's, you know, it's very well kept, very well stocked. Any game you want, they've got it, but they're charging you out the ass for it. Like, I am going to call them out on that. I'm talking 20, 30, 40% higher than eBay prices. And it's right near one of the major universities in Maryland, so all the college kids are like, oh, whatever, I got this money, I'm going to go buy these games. So they totally get away with it. Um, they've cut me some deals here and there, and like, you know, it, it's a cool store, but like, it kind of takes away the fun of collecting because like I go in there not only because of Corona in Maryland stores are at like half capacity so they have all the shit pushed forward and then like half the games are blocked off like you can't even go look at the Wii games or the PS2 games it's all blocked off and it's just like oh let me let me see that uh let me see that Wii game which one sir oh the the one over to the no not that one no no three up uh, two over no, no, the, the, the pink one. No, 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 not that pink one. The, the other one. Oh, forget it. And then it's just like, it's just, I don't know. Like, has, the, I almost feel like now that I've like aired this out and vented about it, I feel like the pandemic has kind of been what has fucked up collecting for me. It's probably the pandemic that has just kind of sullied this and ruined it for me. Because like, you can't go yard sailing because ain't nobody want to do that. At least in Maryland, I don't know if, where you are. Comment again. Uh, I want to get some interactions going here with my subscribers. Like, do you know do you think yard sales are going to happen is that like is the government going to be like no you can't do that because you're going to get corona and everything like is that even going to happen i don't know 
um, are, like, even if, like, it's permitted, I guess, to, like, sell shit in your own yard, uh, you know, big brother, are they gonna come knock on your door and step on your face with a boot and tell you you can't do that? Maybe. I don't know. Sure seems like it. But, you know, like, it just, yard sailing's done. Uh, flea marketing's pretty much done at this point. Like, nobody wants to do that anymore. Like, I, there's a flea market up in Baltimore that I've uh, met, uh, Baltimore Retro Gaming at a few times. That's where he goes pretty much every weekend. Um, people still go in there. It's still wide open. Um, but you can definitely tell that there's less people in there. And it's, it's kind of weird when you go in there and like, I don't know. And the, I, I guess it really is the pandemic and that's kind of ruining collecting for me and just the pricing. And like, I guess since there's more people buying games because they're trapped at home because of the pandemic. And then plus all that free government money you've been getting. So people are just buying the shit out of games and then it's causing the, uh, you know, if I see a price of a game skyrocketing up and I have it, fuck it. I might sell it too. So, you know, I, I largely understand why, you know, the way prices, price and demand, supply and demand and all that stuff. But I mean, it's just, I don't know. If collecting just, um, I'm still gaming just as much. I've never gamed any more than I have now. Because now I got the GC loader. I've got every, I've got Gotcha Force. I've got Fire Emblem. I've got, uh... Cubivore, I've I've got, which reminds me, I finally need to play Cubivore. I've got, uh, you know, Gotcha Force. I owned that at one point, and then I traded it off. I bought it for two fifty, sold it for three fifty during the summer. Last summer, I sold, you know, I made a hundred dollar profit off that. And you know, and I almost hate to touch on that, but this is long enough into the video where nobody's probably going to get to this point. The reason GameCube prices soared up, it was clearly because of Spawn Wave. Was that intentional? I don't know. But, you know, he does his little GameCube series, which is cool. I'm not hating on him. Out of any of the larger channels, he's one of the ones that I actually like because you can clearly tell he's a nerd and he's a gamer and he actually enjoys playing that shit, the, the games that he buys. I can clearly tell that, right? Some of those other larger channels, it's a little little skeptical on that, but at least with Spawn Wave, I, I trust his opinion. He does good video. He puts out good content. He has good news content. Like, he's not a scummy channel, really, right? But him doing all those GameCube videos... As soon as, and you can look this up, like as soon as he started doing those GameCube videos, whew, those prices just fucking skyrocketed. And you know what? GameCube is my favorite console of all time, but I got rid of most of my games. I sold off two thirds of my GameCube collection and I made a hell of money. And I invested some of that back into, you know, other random things, gaming related or car related or actually, no, I bought a new graphics card. Actually, now that I think about it, I got a uh, 2070 Super, which is basically a 2080. Um, and I got a new monitor too, actually, and a new keyboard and a new mouse. And that somewhat kind of goes back into the channel because then it means I can edit videos faster. But, um, you know, like that affects pricing. Um, just there's just a it's just gotten to this weird point where like so many things affect the, like if, if any channel makes a video about anything that has more than like 10,000 subs, that game's going to skyrocket. That's just how it is at this point. Like if it, if it's like an unknown or less talked about game, like. I don't know, let me find, I should have been more prepared, like, Whiplash came out on the PS2 and the Xbox, that's a fucking cool game, nobody ever talks about that game, they made tons of copies of it, it's, it's a third party, I think it was Square Enix maybe, or IDOS, I don't know, some, one of those things, and it's a cool little unique platformer with like two little, uh, I think they're weasels or badgers, I don't know, and uh, it's, it's an interesting game, it's called Whiplash for the Xbox and PS2, totally cheap, but like, if I were a larger channel, would that price skyrocket just because I talked about it? There's an argument to be made there. And like, does a large channel, in a weird way, from like a collecting standpoint, do they have some kind of... Maybe I'm looking into this too deeply, but again, I'm trying to engage in conversation with the community. Does a larger channel have a, a responsibility to like, not talk about expensive games? And I mean like, I, I feel elitist saying that. And like, I, I don't, I don't want to come off that way, but it's clearly going to come off that way. But like... I mean, you know, again, talking about that, and that, and that, and that, like, we all know those are expensive, but, like, I really don't talk about these very often, and then, for the most part, I've always made it a point to never discuss pricing on the channel, because I know that that influences things, and, and people might be like, oh, man, the rare Xbox video Alex did, uh, two or three videos back. I totally showed y'all ten of the rarest games for the Xbox, and those games are rare as fuck. They're rare as shit. I've been through five states game hunting for the past six, seven years, hardcore for the Xbox, and those are ten of the rarest games that I never saw in the stores, really. They're rare. And, and I didn't mention prices of what they go for or what they should probably go for because I don't want to influence the market, right? 
Now, I could be a dick and buy all of them online and then make a video. And I largely conspiracy think, consp I don't conspire maybe, that that is like a thing that some of these larger channels do. Uh, like they'll be like, oh, check out Whiplash for the Xbox. This game's cool as shit. And then you'll see that there's no copies on eBay. And then I'll unleash a couple here and there. And You know, does that shit happen? Like I, I genuinely wonder if that shit happens in the gaming community. I feel like it very well might from some of those larger channels. Um, but, you know, it's just, it, I don't know. I pose the question back to you. Is collecting still fun? And then back to Asian Sleepies. He actually said make a response video. This is now like a 45, 50 minute video, but whatever. I made the video. His video is really, it's a really good video. You should totally watch it. It inspired me to make this video. Hopefully you'll watch this entire video. If you did, as always, what's your favorite pizza toppings? Because I always include that at the end of a large, long ass video. Just because generally only two or three people ever respond with what their favorite toppings are. Mine is probably pepperoni, bacon, and black olives. And I like... I like that dank crust from Domino's. Yeah, I know people hate on Domino's, but I, uh, whatever. I kind of like Domino's. Don't hate me. Uh, with the, you know, the seasoning on the crust, that's that's my jam. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. That's my opinion on it. Kind of a rambly ass video. I don't even know if I'll upload this. We'll see. I'm gonna have to watch it and see if this is even worth uploading. Give me your opinions. I, I genuinely do want your opinions, and I genuinely do want you to go watch Asian Sleepy's video. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And shameless plug, go ahead and watch those Adventure Times with my cousin. Adventure Time with Nico, I'll, I'll probably try to link that there, there, or down below. I don't know. Somewhere. As always, guys, peace out for now. Till next time. Come here, you mother. I'm a... <sighs>